What's up, Kim Greetemans is back. How's y'all doing? I hope everyone is doing good and feeling better. And before I start, remember to like, subscribe, and share, and leave a comment. And I hope everyone is actually feeling better as well and learning some good information. Now for today's video, we're talking about what is BHT. Now BHT got a lot of information, so bear with me. And now I'm about to read off the research that I found out about what BHT is. Now BHT is also known as butylated hydroxytoluene. And that's the chemical name for BHT. BHT is a chemical additive that's said to be gross by the FDA. Now gross, which is G-R-A-S, Gross is generally recognized as safe, and that's what gross means. It said that BHT is added to food as a preservative, which is interesting. And some people use it as a medicine as well, you know? And it's also said to be used to treat herpes and AIDS, which is interesting. And it's also said to be an antioxidant, which is very interesting as well. And it's also said that it may damage viral cells, which might keep viruses from multiplying and doing more damage which is interesting, you know? Now, a lot of people say that BHT is a harmful additive found in many breakfast cereals, which is not good at all, you know? I mean, my cereal, like, you know, I feel healthy, feel better. And some people say it may have antimicrobial properties. Now, you know, it's good information and bad, so I'm like, you know, what's going on? Now, some researchers said that BHT is an antioxidant that prevents oxidative rancidity in our foods. And also, it is added to foods sensitive to oxidation to prevent oxidation. So, they saying, hey, you know, this helps prevent our food from going through oxidative rancidity. Now, if you don't know what oxidative rancidity is, oxidative rancidity is the destruction of vitamins. Wow. Important fatty acids, flavor and production of free radicals that cause stress along with damage to our bodies. Now, oxidative rancidity don't sound good, you know? And it's saying that it prevents it, you know, that's what some researchers are saying. So now, you know, it's looking okay. Now the EWG, which is the Environmental Working Group, says that allegedly the European Safety Authority, they allegedly research rats fed with BHT, develop lung and liver tumors and show thyroid changes, which is not good at all, you know? And it said that from the results, it also showed that it may have disrupted the endocrine signaling. Now, that's, you know, that's wild. The endocrine signaling is the endocrine cells produce hormones to communicate with remote target cells found in other organs. The hormone researches these distant areas using the circulatory system. Uh, that's important to keep in mind, you know. So the endocrine signaling is like, you know, that's with your hormones and stuff, and that's not good either. Now there's this group called the National Toxicology Program. And I'm gonna say what they allegedly said, but before I start, 
you gotta know what PPM is. Now PPM stands for parts per million or milligrams per liter. Now I'm about to read off what the National Toxicology Program allegedly said. Now they allegedly said that to have fed 6,000 ppm to 3,000 ppm to rats and the legal amount of BHT in food is 200 ppm. I'm like, wow, you know, that's some interesting information. Now the amounts over 3,000 and 6,000 ppm was said to be a carcinogenic. Now, before I keep reading carcinogenic, is a disruptive term for things capable of causing cancer. I'm gonna go back. Now, the amounts over 3,000 to 6,000 ppm said to be a carcinogenic for the rats, which is not good. And many researchers say that BHT improves the quality of our food and protects them away from oxidation or food from going bad. Oh, that's a lot of information, you know? Now, I'm gonna tell you about a company. A company says that uncertainties exist about BHT and says there need to be a more studies done about BHT before we, you know, before we start panicking or anything like that or, you know, feeling like it's not good. Now, a group called the Center for Science in the Public Interest allegedly put BHT in his caution column. And that's like, wow, you know, it's in the caution column. Like, hey, there's a little worries. And BHT is FDA approved, but watch what you consume. You know, you gotta be careful. No matter what chemical you consume, man, because you never know, you know. You always gotta, it's harder to get healthier meals and things like that, but you know, if you are able to do it, you know, do it for the best of your safety. Now, some people are trying to compare BHT to vitamin E, and since the vitamin E is a more natural way to go. Now, you know, that's good, you know, vitamin E has got a lot of health benefits if you haven't seen the health benefits of vitamin E, you know? And that's good to keep in mind as well. You know, from what we know about BHT now, it's still like kind of a question mark, but you know, just do your best to consume the best way you can and the best way possible. And I love all y'all out there that's watching. Now you know what BHT is. And it's very important to keep in mind, you know? And remember, don't overconsume or underconsume whatever you consume, no matter what you consume. Because it's very important to keep that balance going, you know? And now, if somebody asks you, hey, what BHT is, just tell them, hey, watch Kim Greedemans, you know? He explained the good. And now you know what BHT is. And everybody looking like, hey, hold on, what are, where are you going? Now, everybody looking like, what about DHA? Now that's for the next future video. So keep that in mind as well, you know? Keep up with Kim Greetings. Get ready for the next video about what is DHA. And I love all y'all that is watching. Thank you for watching this video and learning what BHT is. And remember, do your best at all times. There's only one of you. And I love all y'all out there that are watching. Stay tuned for more future videos. And see y'all in the next future video.